It's better never to have been a Nazi, is it? All right, let's, let's examine that. What's a Nazi? Sounds easy enough to answer, doesn't it? But let's answer that question. What's a Nazi? A card-carrying member of the Nazi party. Okay. Oscar Schindler was a card-carrying member of the Nazi party. There are plenty of Nazis who did all kinds of dreadful things, but there are plenty of members of the Nazi party who didn't really do anything particularly bad at all. One could say that by donning the uniform and wearing the swastika that you're complicit in what the Nazis did, or what other Nazis did, um, because you have aligned yourself with that group. Um, but that's the argument that I dealt with in the previous video, where I pointed out that if we're going to start pointing the finger at people for what the Nazis did, our finger's going to have to be very long. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have to have a very... Uh, energetic right arm because we're going to have to point at every human being alive. The buck doesn't really stop or start anywhere with what created the Nazis. Um, in that sense, we're all Nazis and we're all victims of the Nazis because um, we're all more or less complicit in things that we don't do anything about and we're also constantly feeling the results of other people's actions. Uh, other people's actions who you know, don't really mean to do us any harm, or maybe they do mean to do us harm, but it, their actions result in harm to us. So we're all essentially perpetrators and victims. Uh, we're all Nazis and we're all Jews. That's the way I look at it. Um, now, the reason why I think that this is a point that needs to be made is it goes to the very heart of the subject of guilt. And as I say, guilt isn't necessarily something that you just feel. Guilt is a judgment that you place on someone else. There's the guilty party. That's the thing about Nuremberg. Um, they were very careful. After 40 million had just perished in this hellish conflagration called the Second World War, to make sure that we could then blame the whole thing on a finite number of people so we could put this thing behind us. The Cold War was just about to begin and everyone was in a hurry to put everything behind them. Um, now, the reason why I have a problem with this sort of argument is that uh, the idea of using Nazis and people like that in thought experiments or, I don't know, um, Jeffrey Dahmer or Jack the Ripper or Genghis Khan or whatever, one of the reasons why I don't like bringing these sorts of things into a thought experiment is that it, it presupposes the idea that there are people out there who carry a greater burden of guilt than others. That is something that I don't think we have the means to determine. Because what we have to do is we have to find out why people do evil acts. The only thing that we can really... The only way that we can actually justify holding that view is we say that some people are just plain evil. Why did Hitler do what he did? Uh, okay, if you argue that case in court nowadays, why did you do what you do? Well, were there any extenuating circumstances? Well, yeah, I was brought up in an abusive home, alcoholic parents, whatever. I uh, had a really rough upbringing. I've never really had a good break in my life. There's reasons why I do what I do, etc., etc., and the courts take this into consideration, of course. But that's the problem with guilt-based ethics, isn't it? Because ultimately the buck doesn't stop anywhere, and everybody has any number of reasons for doing what they, they did, and any of those reasons could be the one that did it. Um, you know, you go into the thing from Get Smart, and why did Siegfried get to be so evil? Well, because my father never bought me a sled. When I was a kid, I was traumatized by the fact that my dad never bought me a sled. Even though we lived in Florida, he just wouldn't buy me a sled, and I never recovered from that, and I ended up as the head of chaos, this evil Nazi-like character. Uh, and I think that those arguments are actually valid. Where does your evilness come from? Where does your guilt, where does your culpability for the evil of this world come from? 
you should feel guilty about things that are your fault. Okay, what's your fault? <laughs> um, and what's an evil act? And how can you, is it possible to consciously commit an evil act? Um, you know, Socrates said uh, it's impossible for someone to know what's right and yet do what's wrong. And if you subscribe to that point of view, which I think I do, if I understand what he's saying correctly, we can essentially say that we can never really tell if anybody is evil. We can look at what they do, that's easy enough, and we, if necessary, if we don't like what, we, what they're doing, we can restrain them, we can confine them, we can even, I guess, if we so agree, kill them. Um, but we don't know whether or not they are good or whether or not, or whether or not they are good or evil. Uh, we simply don't have any means of doing that, and we never have had those means. Nazis and thought experiments are not really all as useful as we might think, because I think that what we're trying to do when we bring Nazis into thought experiments is just, just to sort of come up with some example of someone who is just consummately evil. Well, as I say, let's say you had a SS bureaucrat who sat in front of a typewriter his entire career, never harmed anyone, but he was a member of the SS, he was a member of the Nazi party, all that bad stuff. Is he any, by virtue of doing so, is he any worse a person than, say, somebody who, I don't know, um, stole somebody's car once because he actually did commit a crime? Um, who are we to judge? And I don't even mean this on moral grounds. I'm not even coming at this from a judge not yes, lest ye be judged angle. I'm simply saying, how do we know what, whether or not somebody's a good person? We can observe their actions. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, but that's all we can do. We can't tell what's going on in here or in here in your heart. Um, it doesn't work like that. I like the way Desmond Tutu put it. We have, or no, it wasn't Desmond Tutu, it was Gandhi himself. We have no, or there are no devils in existence except for those running around in our own hearts. And he wasn't saying that it's the devils running around in other people's hearts. It's you, buddy. <laughs> you, me, all of us. The devil in there. And I don't see that as a statement that there's evil in all of us. I say that as a recognition that we've all got that Nazi inside of us. There's no point in pretending that we don't. Um, we've got all kinds of other stuff inside of us that hopefully balances that Nazi out, the inner Nazi. We also have the inner saint or whatever. Um, and the second that we decide that there is an imbalance and someone's got more Nazi in them than saint, the second we believe that we can actually conclude that, we have actually made a rational case for what the Nazis did.